everybody. Come on, worship the Lord. Come on, give him praise, honor him, magnify him. Come on, lift him up. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus. Come on, you can do better than that. Worship God, celebrate him. God has kept you. He has held on to you. He has done great things in your life, and he deserves a praise that shows that he has done wonderful things for us. Come on, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Come on, lift up his name right where you are. Open your mouth, clap your hands, do what you got to do, and give God some praise. Give him some worship. Give him glory, and give him honor. Our God is wonderful, and our God is great. So glad you can join us again for another midweek gathering. We appreciate you for tuning in. Uh, we ask that you to please share at this time. Uh, we're believing God with you and for you. And we're getting ready to pray, uh, getting ready to uh, believe God that this evening he would begin to touch you, that he'll show you his glory, show you his power, that God will put his hands on you, that God will touch you um, as we continue to worship virtually, that God will begin to move in your life. We're trusting and believing that God can do that. He will do that for you. Come on, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this moment. We honor you for today. We celebrate you for your goodness and for your mercy. Thank you for being the keeper of our souls. Thank you for being the lifter of our heads. Thank you for being the mender of our hearts. We give you praise for being peace and confusion, joy and sorrow. We give you praise for giving us the victory, for helping us to overcome. We thank you this evening for being God with us and God in us. You are the hope of glory. When things look bleak, you are our hope. When everything around us seems chaotic, you are our refuge. And for that, we give you thanks. We honor you today for being shelter in a storm. Thank you for being our strong tower. We appreciate you for being our defense. We thank you that you wanted to get close to us and came as Jesus. We thank you for sending your only begotten son. We give you praise that you're intimately acquainted with us. You've numbered the hairs on our heads. And for that, we want to give you thanks. You know everything about us. You know our thoughts from afar off. We appreciate you today that you're a God that is known but yet beyond our comprehension. We thank you for being all together lovely, for being all other. Thank you for being who you are. And Father, we pray that you would show us who you are this evening. Open the eyes of our hearts and help us to see you. Reveal your glory to us tonight. Lord, we want to see your face in the person of Jesus Christ. Shine your light in our darkness. Shine your light in the places of our lives that are dark. We pray, God, that you would illuminate us, that you would teach us this evening. We pray now that you would begin to move Holy Spirit, save somebody today, bring a backslider back home, commit someone to this church, move in the hearts and minds of your people. We trust you and we believe you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you believe it, give God some praise, worship him, glorify him, magnify him. The group is coming with some worship, and we'll be back with the teaching. Hallelujah. 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 How many people believe that there is only one name yeah. that is above all names? Oh, yeah. yep. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, God. God, you are so worthy. You are so worthy, God. Come on, lift up your voice and say, There is only one name. There is only one name. There is only one name. Lift up your voice, there is only one name. 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 With power to say. Power to say. Hallelujah. With power to say. Power to say. Now I want you to say that our God. Our God. He's champion. He's champion. He reigns forevermore. forevermore. Come on, somebody say forevermore. forevermore. Come on, somebody say forevermore. 
somebody say, our God, our God, he's champion, he's champion, he reigns, he reigns forevermore. forevermore. Somebody shout forevermore. forevermore. Listen, every knee will bow down. Every knee will bow down. Every tongue. Every tongue will confess Jesus Christ. You are Lord. You are Lord. Come on, tongue. Every knee. Every knee will bow.
say forevermore. Forevermore. Hallelujah. 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 You, Hallelujah. If you know you serve a God that reigns, I want you to start giving God his best praise right now. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Wonderful worship. Praise the Lord. Great job, y'all. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. The Lord Praise is God. good. Yeah. He's our champion. Yes, sir. Wow. It reigns forevermore. My, my, my. All right. Hope you are well this evening. Man. Oh, I hope they felt the presence of God on that. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. All right, if you haven't shared, please share if you can. Um, so we can get into this this evening. And uh, so glad that you can join us. Let's go to Exodus 16. Okay. And uh, we're going to look at verse number one through four. And it'll begin our conversation. So would you stay with us? Keep your Bibles open. Um, I believe God has something to say to us this evening. Exodus 16, verse one through four. And they took their journey. From Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after the departing out of the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, when we did eat bread to the full. For you have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I'll rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day. Watch this, y'all, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. My, my. We spent the last couple of weeks talking about bitterness and complaining. Oh, yeah. Um, that resentment, uh, for whatever reason, unchecked, turns into bitterness. Mm -hmm. Rage, fierceness. Absolutely. You know, uh, despair, sadness, all mm -hmm. that yeah. unmanaged can turn into bitterness. Yeah. Which then revealed in complaining. Yep. The Bible calls murmuring. In the Hebrew, it's obstinate complaining, which means it's a consistent, it's a nature of complaining, not a one-time one thing or... I don't like this. It's a lifestyle of complaining. So it becomes a, um, a seed that is cultivated. Yes. Yeah. And a harvest of nonstop yeah. complaints. Yep. 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 Complaining all the time. Mm -hmm. Finding something wrong with everything. And seeing that as normal. As normal. Okay. So, so, so God is using, uh, he used the bitter waters of Mara to reveal the bitterness internally. So is there a difference between being observant and being critical. Yes, yes. And some people think that being critical actually is being observant, mm -hmm. but um, criticism tends to be destructive. Mm -hmm. Observant has to do with your awareness and hopefully an observation that will allow you to better a situation. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because I can see the bad and the positive. Yes, sir. And make a decision versus only yeah. looking at the bad. Yeah. The worst of it. Yeah. Yeah. So you're right. When they got the bitter words of Mara, they didn't think, okay, God delivered us from the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. Let's observe this to see. He fixed water before. He can fix it again. Yeah. They started murmuring. So miracles are forgotten very quickly. Very quickly. Okay. When your heart is full of bitterness. Yes. Your heart is full of an of in ingratitude. So you're not accusing the disciples of ingratitude when they forgot the miracle of the loaves when they were out on the sea, are you? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, because Jesus is like, they, they, all have, didn't y'all remember what just happened? Yeah. But in trouble can give you, what we've been saying for the past few weeks, if you're not careful, trouble can give you selective amnesia. Yeah, and we almost have a what have you done for me lately kind of attitude with God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. Yes. 
So, so they went to Mara, revealed, God revealed their bitterness. Mm -hmm. They get here and now their hunger is exposed. And now God reveals their level of murmuring and complaining. Okay. Because testing reveals with the intent to transform. Absolutely. Like the, we talked about it a couple weeks ago, Absolutely. testing, yeah. fire reveals dross. Mm -hmm. So God can remove it so he can transform. Mm -hmm. Testing is about working on our inner person. Removing something that's buried and that's, not obvious. Yes. Revealing it. Something, something that's distorting the value mm -hmm. of the believer, but may not be obvious to the believer. Yes. So God has to put us in a testing situation to reveal whether we really have faith, mm -hmm. whether we really want to walk in righteousness, mm -hmm. whether we really have gratitude. Yep whether well, we really want to appreciate what God is doing. Absolutely. And if we have a good memory concerning his history with us. Yes. Okay. Yes. Which can be easily forgotten. Oh, yeah. When we experience it. Oh, yeah. Um, we say it often. We, we see a tragedy happening in somebody else's life. Mm -hmm. We pray for them. And mm -hmm. nine times out of ten, we understand it. We say, well, life, things mm -hmm. in life happen. Yeah. But when it's us, I can't understand. Why did God allow why this did to God happen? Yeah. Like we're exempt from the storms of life. So that's, that's a, could that be an immature look at life? It could be, yes. And, and is a suffer, is a suffering void gospel? Yes, absolutely. Raising people that. that don't expect challenges to come. Yes, I was just about to say that. Okay. Because I got God, I'm never supposed to be experienced, never supposed to experience things. He's always going to keep me from everything. Mm -hmm. And that's, Jesus says in this life, you're going to have trouble. Yeah. That's literally what he says. And he says, it is, um, it's impossible to avoid being offended. It's going to happen. Jesus said it. Yeah. Yeah. The world hated me. It's going to hate you too. Absolutely. It's, it's going to happen. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> so testing is a part of God's process. Mm -hmm. Now, we've always heard God teaches, then test. But I'm starting to see through, through, through study that not only does God teach, then test, he also teaches while he's testing. Absolutely. He teaches to test and teaches while he's testing yes. and tests you while he's teaching you. Yes, sir. absolutely. <laughs> and it made me think about we're homeschooling the kids. Yeah. While they're taking some, you know, some, some practical quizzes, mm -hmm. not big ones. Mm -hmm. It's a teaching moment yeah. while the quiz is going on to prepare them for the test when, the, when we won't help them right. in the moment. Right. But because they don't know the information, they're still not that familiar with mm -hmm. it. You're teaching while you're doing the homework. You're Absolutely. teaching Absolutely. while you're asking them questions. Absolutely. You're holding them by the hand to build them up, their faith, their confidence, to be ready for the big test. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay. So, so God is walking them, because remember, they're only a month or two out of Egypt. So I want us to look at the nation as babes in the faith. Well, we have to. Because they're new into this. Yeah. Like when we first got saved, two months in, we weren't, super believe in God and no, you know, we had enthusiasm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. For very, for very little knowledge. Yeah. Because yeah. enthusiasm looks like faith. Yeah, man. Right, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> hadn't been through anything. Hadn't yet. been through nothing. Yeah. Right. So, so he says, I'm proving them. Yeah. To prove in the Hebrew is an intentional test. Yes, sir. So this hunger situation was an intentional test to see how they would respond. Okay. It was part of the process. Okay. Now today we're going to talk about how provision is a test. Absolutely. Because God says, I'm going to bring, I'm going to give them manna daily mm -hmm. to see yep. if they'll follow my instructions. It's right here. Or not. It's not about the manna as much as it is about, can these people follow a simple yeah. instruction? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you talk a lot about simple instructions in the past. Absolutely. It is the fine print of any miracle. Mm -hmm. And I believe many miracles are missed because we decide what's important in the commandment. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, just, I don't know what makes us do that. Mm -hmm. um, I, think of, uh, I think it was Saul mm -hmm. who God told him what to do regarding a nation. Mm -hmm. He decided he was gonna do something different. Mm -hmm. And it basically cost him the throne. Absolutely, absolutely. Because he couldn't follow a simple mm -hmm. instruction. And it was something he was anointed for. Uh, mm -hmm. And could do. Yes. <laughs> so, so simple instructions, y'all, lead to big things. Mm -hmm. 
Simple instructions lead to big things. Yeah. The provision is the test to see if you can follow his law. Okay. Because if God can trust us to follow a simple instruction, he can trust us with bigger things. Absolutely. If he can't trust us with the daily bread of manna, how can he trust us oh, man. with provision that's beyond daily bread? That's right. Because faithful over a few, ruler over many. That's right. Let's go to Luke 16, and let's look at verse number one. Luke 16. And we're going to look at verse number one. Okay. Peruse through this. And watch what he says here. Jesus speaking here. Luke 16, 1. And he said also unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward. The same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. Right. He called him and said unto him, how is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest no longer be steward. So we're all stewards. Because mm -hmm. the earth is the Lord's, yeah. the fullness thereof, yeah. the world and they that dwell therein. Yeah. Our house belongs to God, car, job, money, kids, family. All of it belongs to God. Our yeah. temple belongs to God. Yes. And God is showing us there's going to come a time where he's going to want us to give an account of our stewardship. How well are we managing everything that he's given under our purview? You know what has always intrigued me about these verses? There's like this, it's not... There's a surprise almost. How is it that I hear this of you? Yes. Based upon what I've put in your control, I didn't expect to hear this testimony about you. coming from you. Yes. Because <laughs> of all people, since I gave you these things, you should have been able to take care of it. But what this shows us, you're right, this one, and in the uh, parable of the talents of Matthew, yeah. is... I've given this thing to you right. as a test. What will you do with the stuff I give you? And this guy is kind of like a Joseph. He's managing the wealth of someone else. Yes. So the rich man knows this is a tremendous privilege. Mm -hmm. And he's expecting some other behavior from this guy purely out of, I appreciate the position you've given me and, and the wealth that you've allowed me to manage. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> so how well are we managing God's stuff? Yeah. Because he says, look, he calls them, give them kind of steward. He says, look, I may no longer be a steward. <laughs> right. That don't, for that, he said, you may no longer be a steward. I, time has come. I'm going to take some stuff away from you. Three. Yeah. Then the steward said within himself, what shall I do for my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship? I cannot dig to beg. I am ashamed. I'm yeah. not going into physical labor. Yeah. I'm resolved what to do. He's not used to it. He's not used to no. it. He used to managing money and stuff. He's used to the pleasantness of the garden. Yes. And now he's getting ready to step out where there's going to be stress and thorns and thorns thistles. Thorns and thistles. Yes, sir. Yeah, a fallen lifestyle. Yeah, man. Right. So he says, I'm resolved what to do, but I'm put, I'm put out of the stewardship. They receive me into their houses. Now, it's interesting mm -hmm. that it takes the threat of consequence. Yeah. For, for, for some of us to change. But he didn't understand that his management of the rich man, which is a type of God, type of Christ, mm -hmm. secured him in his own provision. Yep. So his lifestyle, his position, and everything was just based upon how he handled this rich man's goods. You take care of my stuff, I yeah, take care of you. Yeah. Your life is good because you manage my stuff. Well. I'll put you in an environment mm -hmm. when I gave you this job. Yeah. And now are you going to manage it and get everything out of it? Because his living is a natural outpouring of his stewardship. Right. God yes. mighty yes. knows. Because <laughs> if he's a good steward over it. Yes, sir. He's taken care of. Yes, it perpetuates. If we manage God's stuff well. Yes. We have to start looking at like God's job, God's mm -hmm. money, mm -hmm. God's clothes, God's mm -hmm. house. He says, um, five. So we call every one of his Lord's debtors unto him. Yeah. He said to the first, how much owest thou, my Lord? To the hundred measures of wool. And he said unto him, take thy bill, sit down quickly, and write fifty. Then he said to another, how much owest thou? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. He said unto him, take thy bill, write four score. Mm -hmm. The Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wise. He had enough sense to go try to recoup salvage. Something. Yes, sir. Get something. Recoup yeah. something. Yeah. Right? <laughs> He's done wisely for the children of this world. 
are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I say unto you, here it is, y'all. Make, we're going to start coming to it. Make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. Yeah. That when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Money is your friend. Yes, sir. All right. Because why? You need something to fall back on. Ten. He that is faithful in that which there is the is least. Again. Yes, sir. There it is. Is also faithful in the much. Yep. If you're unjust in the least. Yep. You're unjust in the much. There you go. So to God, it's not about the amount. It's about the principle. My, my. And I think, Bishop, something I know. We say, well, it's only this. And God doesn't see it as uh -uh. this only this. No. He sees what you do with this only this mm -hmm. is what you do with all of it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we have to stop praying. Uh, if I get me another house, mm -hmm. if I get a more expensive car, when God is actually looking at how you're handling what he's given you already. Yes, sir. And your stewardship in this area of life proves whether you're just or unjust. Mm -hmm. Because obviously, it looks as though he had not only, he had been slack. His, his, the rich man had some goods coming to him. Yeah. And he had not gone and gotten them. Mm -hmm. Right, yep. He, yeah. He let him sit there. Yeah. Did nothing with he him. He wasn't doing his job. Yep. <laughs> he wasn't working the system. Yeah. That kept the rich man rich mm -hmm. and kept him provided for. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It literally, it literally was going on. Yeah. So provision is a test. Mm -hmm. How well, you said, how well are we managing our car, our houses, our money, our resources? Because mm -hmm. 11, here it is really we're getting to. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon and unrighteous money resources. Yeah. God says, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Mm -hmm. We think money it's not. is the ultimate thing. No. Money is just the test yeah. for the real stuff that God wants to give. Yeah, man. So if we're unfaithful with money, God sees you'll be unfaithful with my glory, mm -hmm. my power, yep. my authority, yep. all that stuff. Because the, the other true riches are the people in the kingdom. Yep. So how are you treating one another as people of God? Mm -hmm. Because obviously you don't know the value of money. You can't possibly see the value of another human Absolutely. being. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. So we get caught up in God bless me with a job. God bless me with a car. Mm -hmm. Great. But when you receive those things, know their tests. And a test of stewardship. Test of stewardship. Yeah. Can you manage these things well so God can trust you with more? So hmm. you're, you're really asking a question. Can God be comfortable blessing you? Yeah. Or is the only thing God can do for you is daily bread? Yeah. Yep, literally, yep, yeah. Can he keep you in the basics? Yes, sir. Right? <laughs> or trust you with more? We oftentimes, uh, I say, say, we oftentimes wonder, can I trust God more? Mm -hmm. But another big question is, can God trust me? Absolutely. We trust him, but can he trust us? And what we presently have is an indication of what God can trust us with. Absolutely. Because he says in Matthew 25, he gives to everyone according to their several Ability. That's right. Not intent, mm -mm. but proven ability. Proven ability. Mm -hmm. Fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. He makes an assessment to see yeah. how we can manage more. Yeah. Because 12, if you have been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No man can serve two masters. You know, hate the one, love the other, hold to the one, despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So... The, the implication is that this unjust steward had shifted from serving God to being overcome by the spirit of mammon. Amen. Yeah. And that caused him not to do mm -hmm. what he needed to do. Yeah. You know, that, 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 um, that single-mindedness mm -hmm. can blind you to what God's actually doing for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're implying it seems like he was enjoying the benefits of the job, mm -hmm. but was slacking on the actual work mm -hmm. that was required to maintain the responsibility, the responsibility those yes, benefits. Mm -hmm. The stewardship. Because yeah, he enjoyed yeah. the mammon part. Because a steward is a person that manages 
it's another person's property. Mm -hmm. It's like when God gives the earth, he says the earth belongs, I've given man the earth, we're supposed to be stewards of the planet. Mm -hmm. And that means I'm giving you my stuff to manage. Yeah. And I expect you to manage it like it's yours mm -hmm. because it benefits you to do that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. So provision is a test. Yeah. Put that in the comment section. Tell yourself out loud right now. Provision is a test. My, my. Go to John chapter 6. We're teaching this because some of y'all, God's going to start doing some stuff for you during this pandemic where he has been and doing some more because God knows how to provide in the wilderness. Yeah. Matthew chapter 6, and let me, John chapter 6, John 6, and let's look at verse number 5. Let's start there. John 6, verse 5. Oh, man. When Jesus lifted up his eyes. Yeah. Saw a great company coming to him. Yeah. He says unto Philip, when shall we buy bread? That these may eat. <laughs> he kills me with this I know, stuff. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Hey, Peter, yeah. before we go buy some bread for right. <laughs> what, what, what do you think we should do? <laughs> and watch this. And this he said to what? Prove, Prove him. him. Yes, him. sir. For he himself knew what he would do. So, questions yeah. are often invitations to faith in the supernatural. Absolutely. Questions are invitations to faith in the supernatural. Now, when the serpent asks a question, mm -hmm. he's introducing doubt. Yes, sir. When Jesus asks a question, he exposes our doubts to lead us to faith. Absolutely. Satan wants you to stop at the doubt. Absolutely. Jesus wants to take you from your doubts to belief. Let me expose what you think is possible and then show you what I can do after you tell me what you think can't happen. Because a miracle breaks the barrier of limitation and expectation. Mm -hmm. But the question in verse 5 is really also checking Philip's relationship with Jesus. Because yep. he's been with him, so, mm -hmm. you know, how, how are we going to get bread? How, yeah. how did, what have you learned from following me? Yes about satisfying, about the move of God. Because mm -hmm. the move of God happens when there's a need. Yep. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Yep. The move, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so he asked him a question to expose his answer, right? We're going to get to that in a minute. Yeah. And reveal that. Because watch this. When you look at the demoniac uh, father that had the son who was a, de mm -hmm. a demoniac, mm -hmm. he asked Jesus, if you can heal my son. And Jesus says to him, if you can believe. Mm -hmm. Jesus was talking to him again to reveal his unbelief, to lead him to the solution. Absolutely. All right. Because again, Satan asked you the question to stop at doubt. Jesus asked you a question to reveal your doubts to lead you to faith. Absolutely. God is so patient while he's building our faith. Mm -hmm. He'll talk to you now. He'll, yeah, he'll, oh, yeah, he'll, he'll take his time. Yeah. Because immature faith, he performs to build faith. Immature faith, he'll do something to build our faith up. But as we mature, he starts to expect faith first. Do you think that Jesus is coaching Philip into a supernatural state of mind? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. He's, he's leading him to where the miracle can happen. Because he's got to break that not enough. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough yeah. to do what's needed. Yes. Mentality. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. So, so Jesus is about to do something, again, to, to build his faith, to lead mm -hmm. him into the miraculous. Yeah. So Jesus was testing him, proving him. Watch this. This word proving, the Greek means to try by experience. Mm -hmm. Again, he teaches while he's testing. Yeah. He's testing him and teaching him a lesson at the same time. Yeah. To test is to see what a person thinks or how they will behave. Haven't we kind of been taught back in the day that to have this kind of conversation is a negative spiritually? Mm -hmm. When we've seen over and over again with yep. Jesus, he walks Nicodemus through to a kingdom yep. mind. He, yep. he simply walks you through. Yep. And he understands the doubt that's around us mm -hmm. or in us mm -hmm. and knows exactly what to say to us. Absolutely. Because what he usually asks that question when human reason mm -hmm 
uh, when, when reason is leading faith yep. rather than faith overcoming with human reason. Yep. Uh, what's that scripture? He looked on him and loved him. Yeah. The, uh, um, the rich, the rich young ruler. He looked mm -hmm. at him and loved him. Yeah. And if the rich young ruler would have stayed there and not walked away, Jesus would have had a conversation and led him to faith. And the Lord let him walk away. He let him walk away. Because he wanted Jesus to change his principles so yeah. he could fit into the kingdom. Yeah. But Jesus will let you walk away if you're unwilling to submit to his process. So, so he tries this man. He tries to see what he's going to think. So the test, watch this, y'all, was to reveal Philip's thought process about mm -hmm. the problem. There it is. What was his thought process? Verse 7. Philip answered, said, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. Now, we got to uh, come against something real quick. Yeah. Jesus wanted to prove to them to see if he could, Jesus wanted to prove them to see if they could trust him to take care of the people. Mm -hmm. Philip confesses the present issue. We don't have enough. Limit mentality. Limit mentality. Yes, sir. There are times when we need to acknowledge, watch this, that we do not have the ability to do yeah. it ourselves. Yes. The realization of human inability should focus us, focus us on the ability of God. Our human inability should focus on his, should focus us on, on his, his, ability. his ability. Take us from what I can't do, I don't have enough, to I'm the God with the God that created everything and he has enough. So Philip is not perfect, but the conversation is producing some progress. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because he, he's, he's talking him through yes, sir. this thing. Yeah, he's bringing him up. And I, we got to dispel something. Philip, watch this, y'all, this teaching to never say the negative, oh, never confess the bad, right. is not scripture at all. No. It's not scripture at all. The problem is, is where we only confess the negative yep. and never bring the other reality into the situation. Yeah. Faith reveals the difficulty and reveals the power of God. Faith is not denial. Faith acknowledges our present reality yeah. and the possibilities that come with Jesus. So faith doesn't remove sight. It helps us see beyond sight. That's right. So when people say, I'm not sick, I'm healed. No, you're sick and God's going to heal you. Yes, sir. You reveal it and you talk about what is and you also confess what can be. Yeah. Right. And we could do a whole lesson on that because there's a whole bunch of scripture that shows that yeah. principle. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So he, he lets Philip reveal what's wrong to lead him to the solution in his mind, in his mind. Yeah. Right. And Jesus doesn't chastise him for saying we don't have enough. <laughs> so what blows my mind about this is that just like Nicodemus, Philip is approaching the problem with an earthly mindset. Mm -hmm. And all Jesus is trying to do, like he does every time in his word, is introduce a kingdom mind yep. to Philip. Mm -hmm. Now the next verse mm -hmm. is a benefit too. Because yep. you can have a partial revelation mm -hmm. and still be off your mark. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because verse 8, one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, there's a lad here. Yeah which have five, have five barley loaves, yeah. two small fishes, but what are they among so many? Limited, limited, limited mentality. Limited understanding. <laughs> yeah, man. So just like the other test, Jesus was using Philip as the focus, but mm -hmm. was probably addressing all the disciples Absolutely. to see how they thought. And Peter says, look, we got a little bit, but what can we do with the masses? How can this little bit provide for so many? It's such a consistent spiritual issue. I think if we go back to Second Kings, maybe, and the prophet asked the woman, what do you have in your house? And going there, yeah. she says, a little oil. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what they've said is, we only have a little money. Mm -hmm. and, and this is Jesus about to overcome mm -hmm. the money issue yep. as it relates to him providing for, for the, this miracle for the people. Yep. So the money issue is about to be taken out of yes, place. Sir. Yes, sir. 
Because our job is to believe and receive. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And let him take care of how it's going to get done. Absolutely. My, my, And he's my. leading us to believe to receive. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, so I says, and Jesus said, make the men sit down. Here it is. They say we don't have enough, and Jesus starts giving them instructions. Because again, provision is a test to see, can you yeah. follow instructions? Yeah. Tell them to sit down. And now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in a number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and we had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples. Mm -hmm. The disciples to them that were set down, and likewise the fishes, as much as they would. So mm -hmm. this, this whole miracle works by sowing. Right. They take the boys' lunch, they give it to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus takes it, blesses it, gives it to the disciples. The disciples then give to the people. It started with giving. The miracle kept working as they kept giving. Yeah. So as they kept sowing into one another, the miracle just kept on flowing. So he blesses it, breaks it, gives, and yeah. as they keep giving, as yep. they keep sowing, the miracle keeps working. Yep. They sowed into Jesus, he sowed into them, the 12 gave to the people, and it kept on going. Now, watch this. This miracle is like the miracle you brought up in 1 Kings 17. Yeah. It's a replenishing miracle. Absolutely. She only had a little bit of oil, a little bit of meal. And every time she dipped, it replenished. They brought Jesus five loaves and two fish. For 5,000, man. Jesus did not create more loaves and more fish. It was still five loaves and f two fish. I'm going to prove it to you. Go ahead. Watch this. He didn't create more loaves. I see the TV show. They had all these loaves out mm -mm. there, but that's not what happened. Mm -mm. He had five loaves mm -hmm. and he broke pieces mm -hmm. off the five loaves. Mm -hmm. And as he kept breaking it, it kept replenishing. Yes, sir. I know there weren't more loaves because at the end of the miracle, he told them to gather the fragments or the pieces. Right. They weren't whole loaves. No. They were pieces of yes, bread sir. and yes, pieces sir. of fish. So there was more manner than they needed at yes, the moment. Sir. Yes, sir. It was a replenishing mirror. As they kept breaking and as they kept giving, it kept on multiplying, kept on multiplying, and kept on multiplying. Right? If it had not been for this boy, and I think it might be missed in the text, he didn't let the disciples receive the, the lunch from the boy. The Bible says Jesus took mm -hmm. it. So the boy sowed, in, he had been listening to the word too. Mm -hmm. The boy sowed into Jesus yep. and his seed, watch this, impacted everyone yes, that was in that room. Absolutely. Absolutely. It just kept on going from this little boy's lunch. It fed what some people say 15,000 people because they didn't mention the women and the children. Let me ask you a question. So it's obvious Jesus didn't multiply the loaves in his hand. He allowed them, if you will, to multiply in the hands of the disciples. There's a message for us. Yeah. You know, so there's not enough. There's a big demand. A move of God is required. A seed is sown by the boy. And then in the hands of the disciples, mm -hmm. is it possible mm -hmm. that he was testing them to prepare them for another opportunity just like this? Mm -hmm. I can't find it anywhere that they do another bread and fish miracle like this. They do a 4,000 one later. They do. They do. Okay. So the, the, what Jesus does with disciples. Jesus does it. Does, does it with disciples. Yeah, I'm talking about them. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm talking about the same type of thing of Peter walking on water later. Okay. Did these guys come back with understanding, I've done this before, okay. obeying him. Mm -hmm. Will I ever do it again? Because I don't ever recall Peter walking on water again. Oh, no, not up to that. But... He had the capability in the Lord. Because mm -hmm. if he says do, follow the simple instruction. And if I understand what he said, he said, greater works than these shall you do, more works than these shall you do. They were capable of doing another bread, bread and fish miracle mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. It could have been a possibility if time came, something could have happened. So, <laughs> so, so, so they kept giving, kept breaking. 
Yeah. And he says in verse 12, and when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. My, my. Therefore, they gathered them together um, and filled 12 baskets with fragments of five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Mm -hmm. So all they kept doing was follow the instructions. That's all they had to do. They, they didn't ask how it was going to happen. We don't know how that thing kept on multiplying. We just know it kept on doing it. It reminds me of uh, Mary says to uh, the servants in John yeah, 2, yeah. whatever he says, do, yeah, do, it. do it. Don't question it. Just do it. Just do what he says and watch this thing transform and turn around. And it stopped when the people were full. Mm -hmm. Move <laughs> with God. <laughs> when the folk were full Move and God the stopped. giving stopped, yeah. yep. miracle was done. There it is. Because why? They were full and the miracle was proportioned to their hunger. That's right. Because they followed instructions. Now let's go back to Exodus 16, and it will be done. Exodus 16. I, I'm amazed that, um, I'm not amazed. Is it a compliment to us as believers that even the apostles had to witness more miracles? Because mm -hmm. now they're ready to call him a prophet where we just came from. Yeah. So it looks like not only did the miracle, was the miracle revelation, but they had a deeper revelation of who Jesus who was. Jesus was, yep. Because this is truly a prophet now. Mm -hmm. Amazing. They didn't yep. think he was before? They, they, they were still <laughs> wrestling with who he was. Because if we actually read further to John 6, yeah. the same crowd that he did miracles for, yeah. when he started talking about eating his flesh, drinking his blood, they, they got out of there. Yeah, they got out of there. Because they were only following Jesus for the miracles, not for the teaching. My, my. That's why pastors, it's dangerous to build your ministry on miracles. Ooh. Because they'll stay for the miracles, but once you start teaching. Yeah. The, the, the principles that have to be taught to position you for a miracle are not always what people want to hear. Yep. Because mm -hmm. now you're getting the holiness and sanctification and all that. Yeah. Other, yeah. You know. It's teaching with miracles, not mm -hmm. miracles with yeah. outside of teaching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exodus 16. Now, the people murmured, God moved, we read it. Their immature faith, but God still did this miracle. Yeah. He told them um, that in verse four, I'm a rain breath from heaven for you. Mm -hmm. They're going to go out, gather a certain rate every day that may prove them whether they walk in my law or no. OK. Verse five, and it shall come to pass on the sixth day. They shall prepare that which they bring in. It shall be twice as much as they gather daily. My, my. Now, I am no, I ain't sitting here prophesying. Yeah. <laughs> All I know <laughs> is trends. And trajectory. Yeah. You are economists by trade. Yep. Recessions in this country yep. come around every 10, 20, 30 years. Cycle. Cycles. Mm -hmm. I would not be surprised yeah. if in the next couple years, another one, I don't know how deep it's going to be. Yeah. It could be small, could be big, because they come in cycles. Always. Always. Every industry. Every industry yes, does. Sir. And it impacts the people. But watch what God does to prepare them for the day when the bread doesn't come. <laughs> he gives them double one day to hold them over for the day when the bread doesn't come out on the Sabbath day. That's right. God, watch this, will sometimes bless you before the problem shows up. Absolutely. So you have what you need when the season of lack kicks in. Which makes your stewardship vital. Yes, sir. Because if you can be a good steward. Yes, sir. It can hold you over yes, during sir. seasons of lack. Faithful over few. Faithful over yes, a few. Sir. Tied it all in together, y'all. Because mm -hmm. provision is a test. That's right. Will you eat all the bread or will you save some of it for later? Because, you know, millionaires are created during a recession. Absolutely. Absolutely. Most people, you know, recession. If you look at the sports team, mm -hmm. recession does not affect everyone the same way. Yep. They say during the pandemic, something like 5,000, is it 5,000 or 50,000 millionaires have been created during the pandemic. Absolutely. Absolutely. They say some people's wealth went through the roof. Absolutely. They were already wealthy. Yep during the pandemic. So it is, it is God illuminating your mind to opportunity mm -hmm. and you having, watch this, having the foundation mm -hmm. to take advantage of the season of opportunity that God has sent. It. Absolutely. But if I haven't been a good steward yep. and it comes along, mm -hmm. then, you know, 
It makes me think of when they were going door to door asking people to invest in Comcast. Oh yeah, I remember that story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guy, guy asked me for $150, and I didn't, I didn't think cable was ever going to, uh, you know. And I said, nah, man, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I wish I had. I did, right? Man, <laughs> come on. Right. For $150? Yeah, 100000 easy. And, and it, was, it was in Jones Cable, mm -hmm. which was a very small company. Mm -hmm. So the 150 was a good investment for them to get up and running. Yeah. Well, Comcast bought Jones. Yeah. And everybody in Jones became millionaires. <laughs> Little I, I was on the slow boat right, that right. day. <laughs> <laughs> Got, got to bring it back around. Oh man, I was, but, I was on slow boat. But I, I, that actually gonna fit into the story. So yeah. <laughs> but but most people we get tight and then start asking God, how come you're not moving? Where's the miracle? I need some money. And God's like, I gave it to I you before. Did. I you did. You spent it all. Yes, sir. It's like the um the uh, famine in, with Joseph. Seven years of plenty mm -hmm. to hold you over during seven years of famine. Mm -hmm. So God often will provide before the problem. Absolutely. Let's jump down to verse fourteen. And uh, 15, because again, okay. if you don't follow directions, yeah. you'll miss what God is doing. Verse 14 and 15. And when the dew lay that was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness, there lay a small round thing, as small as an oar, frost mm -hmm. on the ground. Mm -hmm. And when the children of Israel saw it, yeah. they said to one another, it is manna, for they wist not what it was. Mm. Like you just said, they saw the opportunity was like, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. <laughs> And it took Moses to say, this is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. My Sometimes my. opportunity comes in a form that you won't recognize. Yeah. And you need somebody like a Moses to tell you what it is. It also tells me that we don't, sometimes we miss or don't appreciate the way God is providing. A absolutely, yeah. I want it my way. And God reveals his bread. And Moses has to tell him, y'all, mm -hmm. This is the bread the Lord has given you. Yep. So they, they're witnessing a miracle, but can't receive it. Mm -hmm. Because they're too busy trying. It's not familiar to them. Well, it doesn't look like what he's done before. Yeah. Yep. We got to be open to the new ways that God mm -hmm. is doing things. Yeah. Man, I hope y'all getting this. This feels prophetic tonight. And manna means what is it? What is it? Because they're looking yeah. and says, what is it? Yeah. <laughs> Let's look down at verse 16. He says, this is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Mm. Gather it every man according to his eating. And Omar for every man, according to the number of persons, take ye every man for them which are in his tents. Watch mm -hmm. this. Provision is not just for you, the individual. Yeah. He said, I need you to gather for everybody that's in your tent, yeah. everybody that's connected to How you. How are you going to affect the lives of some other people? Absolutely. Yes, sir. If you want this just so you can buy some new shoes, it ain't coming that way. Not, not what you're asking for. Yes. Because if God can't trust you with the true riches, mm -hmm. and that is people, yep. mm -hmm. this is amazing. Yeah. So God has to trust us to be good stewards. He has to trust us to save. He has to trust us to sow into other people's lives when Absolutely. he blesses us. Absolutely. Let's look at verse 18. And uh, we're going to end, the, we're going to um, come back to this later. It says, and when they did meet it with an Omar, he that gathered much had nothing over. Yeah. Daily bread. Mm -hmm. He that gathered little had no lack. Mm -hmm. They gathered every man according to his eating my, or my. according to his appetite. God will supply. God supplies yeah. what you need in your life. Yes, sir. You may need more, so God may give you more because of the responsibilities that you yeah. have. But he may have provided, and I didn't recognize it. True. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? What is that? <laughs> manna, right, right, manna. <laughs> oh, man. Don't compare portions, y'all. No. God, su God supplies what people need specific to their life. All right? Let's look at verse number 19. And we got to get out of here. Verse 19 says, And Moses said, Let no man leave it till the morning. Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto Moses, mm. but some of them left it. Until, until the morning, mm -hmm. and it read worms, yeah, it, it stank, it. Could, and Moses wroth with them. Missed the miracle. They, they, missed the miracle. They couldn't even follow a simple instruction. All that complaining. All that complaining. And missed the miracle. He said, take the bread, eat it in that day. And they didn't do what they were supposed to do, and all of a sudden, worms got into it, and it got messed up. Well, human reason kicked up. Well, we can get the rest of this tomorrow. No, the miracle was attached to you getting it off the ground today. Today. Harvest it today. today. 
Give us this day our daily bread. Mm -hmm. So, um, because again, if God can't trust you with daily bread, how can he trust you with abundance? If you can't follow the simple instruction of manna, how is he going to trust you with promise? Let's look down at verse 24. Yeah. And watch this. And they laid it up till the morning. Now, this is the, um, the bread that, where God gave them double. Mm -hmm. They laid the extra up till morning as Moses bade, and it did not stink. That one did not go away. Yeah. Now there's any worm therein. And Moses said, eat that today. For today it is a Sabbath unto the Lord. Today you should not find it in the field. All right? Mm -hmm. So God maintained it. Six, six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is Sabbath, in it there shall be none. And it came to pass. Yeah. These doggone people. There went out some people on the seventh day to go gather, and they found nothing. Told them what to do. Simple instruction. But here's the problem. In <laughs> face of evidence as to the accuracy of the instruction and the blessing coming from obeying it, they still did it their own way. <laughs> Uh, what he didn't he ask to them to, like, name it. He didn't ask you to do nothing difficult. Just take up to save some for the next day. <laughs> How long shall ye be with, with me? me. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. And, 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 so, so, and Moses was mad. How long refuse you to keep my commandments and my laws? Wow. Now, here's the thing. God let those, those people that went out to gather, mm -hmm. he let them starve to the next day. And sometimes God has got to be that parent. You ain't listen. Here's the consequence. <laughs> I'm going to give you bread on, on the next day, but yeah. on the Sabbath day, you're going to have to not eat anything. Yeah. So you'll learn your lesson. Because why? God was using provision as a test. Here's, here's a... Um, God doesn't ask Moses, how long are they going to refuse? He asked Moses, how long are you going to refuse? Mm -hmm. To do my commandment. Mm -hmm. So Moses, because he's an intercessor, yeah. includes himself. So now that God's upset, yeah. he's including Moses he's including in the disobedience <laughs> right, of the right. people. Moses mad at them and God said, <laughs> Moses, just. <laughs> I gave him to you, Moses. Right, right. So let's close this out. Last scripture. Go to uh, 2 Corinthians 8. And uh, this is going to tie the, the uh, John 6 scripture and this Exodus scripture together. John, first, 2 Corinthians 8. Okay. 2 Corinthians 8, and we're going to look at verse 11 through 15. And uh, this will be a good closeout. 2 Corinthians 8, 11 through 15. He says, Now therefore, perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which you have. So God says, before you perform it, there has to be a willingness, a readiness of will first. Yeah. So that there can be a performance, Paul's talking to a bunch of givers here, mm -hmm. out of what you have. Not out of what you don't have, right. but out of what you have. Verse 12, for if there first be a willing mind, yeah. it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. So God's not judging us based off what we don't have. Right. He wants us to give what we do have willingly, mm -hmm. with a willing heart. 13, for I mean not that other men be eased and ye be burdened. This is going to help some of us here. Verse 14, but by an equality that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want. So God will supply abundance to somebody else mm -hmm. to help somebody else in their want. Right. And that their abundance may be a supply for your want. Yeah. That whole giving to each other. Why? That there may be equality. Yeah. It's going to deliver some of y'all in verse 15. As is written, he that had gathered much had nothing over. He that had gathered little had wow. no Wow. We need to change how we see equality in the kingdom. Yes, sir. Equality in the kingdom is not both of us having the same exact thing. Mm -mm. Equality in the kingdom is if this person needs more, they get more. Yeah. If this person needs less, they get less. Yeah. God calls that equality. equality. Yes, sir. We're looking at how come you did more for that person? Yeah. Do you know the responsibilities that that person has Absolutely. that requires Absolutely. more? Absolutely. 
So it's not that God's going to give everybody the same thing, but God's going to give everybody what they need for their life, and he calls that equal. The Bible says, Philippians, God shall supply all your need. When the move of God comes, when the need is met, the move of God stops. There you go. Okay. Just like in John 6. Yes, sir. Some ate more. Yes, sir. Some ate less. Yes, sir. Because everybody has a different appetite mm -hmm. and everybody has a different need. Mm -hmm. So in this season, this season of this pandemic, this wilderness that we're in, God is testing our provision. This isn't the time for us to be online shopping on Amazon every single day. Yeah. A lot of people got in trouble with that. Yeah, lot, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Losing money and wasting yeah. money, yeah. shopping and buying because they're bored and so and so, so and so. Gambling so. online. Gambling online, yeah. 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 Not to say you can't buy anything, but God is using provision as a test. Yeah. And for a lot of us that maximize opportunity and use wisdom, we can make more during this pandemic mm -hmm. than we did before the pandemic. And people are probably wondering when you say that, how? Well, the Bible says God will give you witty inventions. Yep. He, will, he will give you ideas mm -hmm. appropriate for the season that you're in. Because mm -hmm. the Bible does say, and some people don't like talking about it, it is God who has given you the power to get or generate wealth. Yep. Mm -hmm. And my mindset is, if I'm asking God to make me wealthy, how many generations do I want to bless? Yeah. Because that's kingdom. Absolutely. If I want to be wealthy just for me, that's an empire. Absolutely. That's all about one individual. Absolutely. With a couple of people just hanging on. Mm -hmm. But kingdom yep. is inclusive. Yeah. It's community. Yep. Uh, it, it's, it's a courageous kind of faith that not only do I want to be responsible for the now, yeah. but I want generations to the tenth yeah. to be blessed by what God's going to do for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then God's got to be able to, is God comfortable with you being that blessed? Yeah. 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 And how does he know? He, we proved it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Are you passing the test? Mm -hmm. Small things lead to big things. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're right. The, the ideas, the inventions, God didn't cook the manna for them. Mm -mm. He just put it out there on the ground. They had to get it, prepare it, make it, cook it. God will present the opportunities to us. The question is, are we going to maximize those opportunities? It was their involvement in the miracle. Yeah. Just like the little boy was involved in the miracle, yeah. the disciples were involved in the miracle. You know, they had to do something, follow the fine print, yeah. and pick it up. And those that didn't follow the fine print, they went lacking. Absolutely. Yep. You don't want to be on the lacking side no. in this season. Because what is God is showing us that he knows how to provide for his people, even in the wilderness, even in the pandemic, God's taking care of us. We have members here. Um, I can think of one in particular uh, who's been out of work since COVID, uh, hasn't missed a bill, mm -mm. hasn't missed, needs been met, been, God's been taking care of her just all over during this time. He'll do that. He'll do, yep. He'll do People that. hitting us up, just got one last week, um, debts paid off, mm -hmm. got a promotion on the job, wasn't even yeah. looking for it. Yeah. You know, I mean, just stuff just. Because God knows what the future holds. Yeah. So his provision uh, has already been decided. Yep. You know? Wow. Yeah. God can do it. God knows how to take care of his people. And we believe, especially, you know, you've been teaching a lot of pastors mm -hmm. and ministers this a lot. Yeah. When we come to teach, it's to make an impact. That's right. We believe that what we teach is going to manifest itself in the people of God because the spirit of God and the people of God cooperating with the word. And this thing can start to work in your life. Yeah. In the season, in this time. How many times have we um, bought something, paid good money for it, pull the directions out of the box, and then decide we know better <laughs> than the manufacturer how to put it together? Yep. And following our own reasoning, mm -hmm. never ever build something that reaches its full potential. Because yeah. we don't follow the yeah. simple instructions. God's giving you simple instructions during this time. Follow them and watch what he begins to do in your life. Salvation is a simple instruction yes, also. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some people in the church have made it a little more complex. 
Jesus walks up to some people and says, hey, y'all, follow me and become fishers of men. Yeah. He didn't tell them to drop their nets. They did that on their own. Mm -hmm. You know, they, he, he just told, he didn't tell them to run around seven times, do a backflip, speak in tongues. Hey, join me on the journey. Whatever you have to do to follow me. Yeah. Do what you got to do. Do that. And come on, follow me. Yeah. Salvation is a simple thing in the sense of the instruction itself. Is yes, simple. sir. Come unto me, all of you that are heavy. I'll give you rest. Whosoever will, mm -hmm. let him come. Yeah. If you call on me, you shall be saved. You yeah. shall be delivered. Yeah. Simple instruction that takes faith to do, to step over and experience what's on the other side of instruction, what's on the other side of obedience. And God is calling you this evening. Yeah. Calling you to him. Calvary was the hard part. Yeah. 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 He took care of the hard part. Yeah. We're not down on the cross. Yeah. We ain't buried for a few days and then raised up again. Mm -mm. We just follow the one who did, went through that experience. If you need to know the Lord, uh, if you need to come into a relationship with him, Jesus is saying, come walk with me. Salvation is a journey. Come follow him, come walk with him. And the story of Exodus 16, it's really a picture of Jesus. He is the manna, he is the bread that came down from God. If you read the rest of John 6, Jesus ties in the miracle of the loaves, uh, the communion meal into Exodus 16. He told him, your fathers ate man in the wilderness and died. But he said, if you get this real bread, I'm the real bread, you'll never hunger again. In the bitter waters of Mara, which we talked about a few weeks ago, he was trying to show them, if you come to me, you'll never thirst again. In this one, tonight, he's showing us, if you come to me, you'll never hunger again. Yeah. Because if you come to me, you'll never hunger and you'll never thirst again. Jesus is revealed in the text. Come on and come to him. I remember Jesus in John 4, I love the story, he's sitting on the well, a woman comes to him, he asks her for some water, you know, she starts talking about, you know, you a Jew, and you know, yeah. I thought y'all don't get along yeah. with us. And Jesus said, if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for some water. Mm -hmm. And watch this, he exposed her issues yes, to sir. lead her to faith. Absolutely. And he walked her through in a conversation and God doesn't mind questions. That mm -hmm. whole never question God is not scriptural. No, not There's at all. a whole bunch of questions in scripture. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And God answers questions. Just come on. Connect your life to the Lord. You don't have to know it all. That's why you come and you'll learn. You come to our Embrace class. Oh, yeah. Watch on Sunday. Watch on Wednesday. And we'll, we'll teach, teach you. you. We'll teach you. Learn. Just come on. Come to Jesus now. Give the Lord your life. He is our Savior. He is the living Word. If you need to rededicate your life, come on, make that recommitment this evening. You walked away from God for whatever reason. The pandemic may have gotten to you, the difficulties, or even if it was before that. But you find yourself this evening recognizing, I need to recommit my life back to the world. I need to get back into this. You didn't follow some instructions and it took you off the wrong way, on the wrong path. We never backslide usually all at once. Usually it's a slow yeah. decision. Yes. One decision leads to little another. Little by little. Little by little. Yeah. Just, then you look up and you're like, wow, I, how did I get this far That's out here? That's why the Bible calls us sheep. Yeah. One bite at a time. Just, you nibble our way. We're too busy paying attention to our, our hunger than where we're going. We just yeah. eat, eat, eat. Look up. Shepherd, know where to be found. Rest of the flock, know where to be found. But I love God because he leaves the 90 and 9 to go find the one. Yeah. Come on, rededicate your life to the Lord. We're both witnesses yeah. that he'll lead the 90 and 9 because there was a time where both of us oh, was the yeah. one that he had to come find oh, yeah. and bring us back into the sheepfold. Come on, rededicate your life to the Lord. Make that recommitment. Come back to him this evening. If you need a church home, you want to connect to Bethany Church, Transformation Church of New Jersey, we'd love for you to be a part of this family, whether you're distant or you're local. If you're local, we have our drive-in service on Saturdays and we're still online for, oh, yeah. uh, for a little bit. And those of you that are distant, you can connect to our Connections Church. It's a real connection church. It's not just watching us on Sundays and Wednesdays, but our yeah. Embrace class. Everything. Pastoral counseling. Everything. Ministries. We got people from different states volunteering for ministries now. And, you know, come on in. One of our Connections members called for an appointment today. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Good. And, and that's, that's what happened. A real membership, real part of the church. Come on, make the connection. 
If you fit in one of those three categories, put your name in the comment section. Someone from our team will connect with you, especially those of you who are backslidden. Come on back home. Resist the urge to excuse your way out of this. Talk about your wounds. See, we talked about not, you know, confessing the bad. Think about this. The scripture says, I believe, therefore I've speak, spoken. Paul, in that context, is yeah. referring to David in Psalm 116, which says, I was greatly afflicted. I believe, therefore I was spoken. Mm -hmm. I've spoken. The thing that Paul's revealing to us in that same chapter of Corinthians, he says, I'm per perplexed, but we're not destroyed. That's right. You know, we're going through this, but we're not out of it. That's the word of faith is that I'm sad today, but God's still good to me. Yeah. I'm hurting, but God's going to heal me. Yeah, I may be sick, but God's going to come through. That's the word of faith that we preach. And you may have gotten caught up in some things. It's time to come back home. Come back to home to the Lord. I feel a burden for you. Come back to the Lord. Don't let your pain, your hang-ups, your wounds, somebody hurt you in church, stop you from connecting to the God that really matters. The serpent's job is always to get us out of the garden. And I, and I think sometimes um, the historic belief that once you get saved, uh, God gives you grace and empowers you with the Spirit to mature. Yeah. But like children maturing into adults, maturity does not come without mistakes. Yeah. And people need to understand that the Lord by grace saves us, by grace keeps us yeah. as we grow in grace. Yes. As, as, we, as the measure of our faith is increased, as we become uh, serious adults for him. Yeah. That you don't have to worry about being perfect tomorrow. Yeah. You do have to be committed to being perfected or matured in the Lord. Yeah. Uh, you'll get rid of the public stuff pretty quickly. It's the private stuff that you'll struggle with. But I'm here to tell you, God is able. Yes, he is. God is able. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Put your name in the comment section. Someone from our team will connect with you. We'll celebrate you. Heaven's rejoicing with you and for you as you come. Of course, we always give during this time. Oh, yeah. And that Corinthians 8 scripture is a great given scripture. He says mm -hmm. there's got to be a readiness of will, a mm -hmm. willingness first. In the next chapter, in chapter 9, he says God wants a cheerful giver. People see what we give, but God looks at the heart yeah. to see, is there a willingness? Mm -hmm. The Bible says that the lamb was slain before the very foundations of the world. God sacrificed Jesus in his heart before he was sacrificed on the earth. Yeah. That's what a seed is like, especially them hard ones. Yeah. You got to kind of resolve it in your heart first. So by the time you give it, it's a little easier to do. And, and the, the young lad in the story that you opened up, is not giving out of his excess. Yeah. He's giving out of what he needs yeah, at the moment. Yeah, literally, yeah. And, and that is called a sacrifice. Yeah. So that seed that we sow should come from a place, from a willingness. Yeah. The Macedonian church was not a wealthy church, yep. but they gave out of their own needs yes, and God moved in a mighty way. Absolutely. So here goes this young boy. He gives out of the very thing he needs. It's his lunch. Yeah. So it's the size of a boy's lunch. Yeah. He says, here, Jesus, take this. Take it. Yep, you're right. The boy had a little, the Macedonian church, and mm -hmm. that second Corinthians 8 yeah, yeah. had a little. So yeah. Paul was telling him, just give out of what you have. Yeah. Get out, give out of your need and watch God begin to yeah. satisfy you, mm -hmm. fill you to the full. Yeah. If you would just do it willingly, willing heart. It, it takes faith to do that. Yep. Yeah. What's the, um, the offering people talk about uh, giving it willingly? Um, Free will. Free will offering. Free will. Free will offering is not just I give whatever I want. No. Yeah. Free will is giving what you've been asked for. And doing it willingly. willingly. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so if we were to ask for a $50 seed, the willing, the free will of it comes from how willing you sow the seed. Yeah. And the young boy's lunch, he gave it willingly. And Jesus received it and multiplied it. So he left there with more than he came. Absolutely. Yes, sir. And he wasn't mad that everybody else was getting fed. No, he was happy because he was getting no, fed too. No. He's impacting the kingdom. Absolutely. Yeah. Because provision is a test. Mm -hmm. Can God provide for me to take care of his church and his kingdom? He's given us the power to get wealth so we can establish his covenant. On the earth. On the earth. Not yes, ours. His covenant. His. On the earth. Sow that seed this evening. The information is on the screen. Um, 
Join on in. Simple instruction. That's all. Not deep. Simple instruction. Follow and watch God begin to move in your life. Some quick announcements. Don't forget that we have driving service this uh, Saturday. Okay. Um, we're getting ready for driving communion service on the first Sunday in October, mm -hmm. six o'clock. Y'all pray for good weather. Um, we're excited about that. And don't forget our Abundant Harvest Bible Institute classes begin next Tuesday. Is it next Tuesday? Next Tuesday, yeah. I thought I don't it was know this why week. Why I thought it was this I, tomorrow? I, I was studying for this week. It's next <laughs> Tuesday. And I'm sitting there like, oh, I gotta hurry up. My class is Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> I thought it started tomorrow night, man. Me, I, me too. I'm okay. You know, I was, uh, and then somebody reminded me, um, thank God for help. Uh, but we're starting next Tuesday. Pastor Prescott's class starts next Tuesday. Okay. Her class is called Faith for the Season. You want to take that class, Faith yeah. for the Season. Yeah. We need faith for this season. Yes, sir. COVID is not over, y'all. Mm -mm. I just saw something yesterday, yesterday or today. 1,900 people are dying a day. Yes, That's sir. back to the numbers we were in March. Absolutely. Last year. When we, the difference is, those of us who live up north, we got it bad last year. Yep. The south didn't have it that bad last year. Yeah. Now it's flipped. It doesn't mean we're out of the water. No. This is not post-COVID. No, no, not at all. No, not, not at, at all. all. No, not at all. No. Over 100,000 people a day are still contracting the virus. So we have to be careful. Um, you know, so we're still staying virtual. I know people want to get back in the building. So do we. We want to get back in the building yes, too. Yes, sir. But just for safety purposes, uh, we're doing that. But anyway, Faith for the Season next Tuesday. I'm teaching the Tabernacle on Fridays. Okay. Um, so my class starts next Friday on the Tabernacle. Um, so go to our website, go to Bethany.com, and uh, you can register there. And um, I said anything you want to share? No, you? man. I'm just, I'm just glad you joined us tonight. You know, write us, let us know what impact the Word is having on your life and how it's strengthening you in the inner individual and um, how the Lord is moving through His Word in your life. And, and we, we always give a lot of simple instructions. Yeah and your miracles are attached to those. I just want to encourage you. Absolutely. All right, God bless you. The Lord keep you. Heaven smile upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See y'all later. <laughs>